Well, it seems like the fireworks have gone off, the ball is dropped, and the hangovers are starting to fade, which means we are now firmly into a new year. Welcome to 2022. It's also the time of year where we here at Relative Time take a minute to reflect and look back and pick out the best watches from last year. Although, as I point out every year, these aren't necessarily the best watches, period, or even watches that were necessarily released in the previous year. But rather, these are the watches that I reviewed and the ones that left the biggest impression on me, so that when I look back, they're the ones I most remember. So let's start things off with one of the best budget divers of 2021. And this is a watch that marks a potential new smaller direction for the brand. So coming in at number 10, we have the Aragon 42mm Divemaster. Aragon is the granddaddy of micro brands, and the Divemaster lineup has been a longtime staple within Aragon. And it's one that is often associated with value, because Aragon just gives you a lot for your money. However, there is one sort of issue here, and it's an issue you could say that is prevalent within Aragon as a whole, and that's that they've always been a larger watch. People have been asking for smaller Aragons, and especially a smaller dive master for years, but that always seemed to fall on deaf ears, at least until late 2019 when it was announced that there was a new 42mm dive master coming, and for Aragon fans, this was a pretty big deal. Now, 42 millimeters may not seem that small, but when you're talking Aragon, whose watches are typically in the 45 to 50 millimeter range, 42 is a big and honestly welcome departure. So when this watch was released, I picked it up for 139 bucks, and it is no doubt a great looking diver. But with that, you also got 200 meters of water resistance, a flat sapphire crystal, Seiko NH36A movement, and amazingly, a ceramic bezel, which is really crazy good when you look at the rest of the market. And I think this really represented one of the best budget or entry level divers of the year. I mean, outside of AliExpress, there's not much that can touch this thing in terms of value. The only issue I had with it was unfortunately the loom, as it was a bit weak, and especially for a diver. But later in the year, I looked at a 43mm version that actually had good loom. So it seems like Aragon is paying attention and improving where they can along the way. And personally, I can't wait to see if they follow up the smaller trend with more watches in 2022. Now, while Aragon had the best budget diver of the year, up next we have the clear winner when it comes to value of 2021. So coming in at number 9, we have the Escapement Time Flieger. This is a watch I've talked about a few times now, but it's worth mentioning again because it is a crazy good deal for what you're getting. I mean, outside of German-made Fliegers, this may be the best one out there. It has a decent no-frills stainless steel case, a Seiko NH38 movement, sapphire crystal, as well as a gorgeous black reflective dial complete with blued hands. Not to mention, this thing has a ton of loom, enough that it can rival many divers out there. It also comes with a screwed down crown, as well as 200 meters of water resistance. Which means this Flieger isn't just about looks, but it's a pure tool watch that's ready for just about anything. Now, when I bought this watch for 100 bucks, that was a flat out steal. But unfortunately, the prices have started going up. Some of that may just be due to Escapement Time's popularity, and some of that may be due to the rising cost of movements. So as of right now, they're going for about 120 bucks and I think that's still pretty good for what you're getting. The only other catch with this one may be its size. Originally, these only came in 42 millimeters, and if you wanted something a little bit smaller, you were flat out of luck. But recently, they have introduced a 40 millimeter version, but it is one that only comes with a high beat PT5000 movement, and as such, it is a little bit more. Either way, if you're looking for a great budget Flieger, Escapement Time is definitely a watch to look into. Next up, we have a watch that is simply amazing from a technological standpoint, as it's able to maintain an accuracy within 5 seconds a year. However, with increased accuracy often comes increased prices, so this is a little bit pricey for a quartz watch. But it's honestly one I've personally come to appreciate. So at number 8, we have the Longines Conquest VHP GMT. A mouthful to be sure. And as I mentioned in my Ask Me Anything video, this is a watch that has come to live on my desk, and not one of my watch boxes. And as such, it's really become one of my go-to pieces. 
In addition to it always being accurate thanks to that high precision movement, it also features a perpetual calendar and sets itself with daylight savings time. So it's a true set it and forget it type of watch, and one that's always good to go. But more importantly, it's a great looking watch that goes with just about anything. As this 41mm sports watch strikes a nice balance between casual and dressy. Plus, with that GMT functionality, it's a great travel piece as well. Personally, I've really come to love it, and it is one I would recommend, but with a few reservations. The two biggest issues with this one is the subpar 50 meters of water resistance and the higher price tag. And even if you're talking gray market, the price tag can be a bit much. But if you really love the idea of this, there's also a non-GMT version that's a bit less, as well as a whole line of automatic Quantcus out there. Those of you that follow the channel know I'm a huge field watch fan, and the watch we have coming up next I think is the best field watch released last year. And it really doesn't hurt that this one comes in at a pretty fair price. So coming in at number 7, we have the Swiss watch company's Bunker. The Bunker is a classic World War II style field watch, but it is one with a few twists courtesy of the Swiss watch company. So for the most part, this watch is fairly standard in its design. But what really sets it apart is its execution. The Swiss watch company pulled out all the stops with this one, creating a near-perfect field watch. As it utilizes a titanium-based case with an extra scratch-resistant coating, 100 meters of water resistance with a screwed-down crown, as well as a Swiss high-beat movement and a sapphire crystal with 16 layers of anti-reflective coating, which is overkill with a capital O. And all of this creates a 10 millimeter thin, lightweight watch that can pretty much go anywhere and look good at the same time. But Swiss watch company also went a little crazy when it came to the loom, adding 20 layers, and I repeat, 20 layers of X1 grade Swiss Super Luminova to this thing. Given this field watch a crazy amount of luminescence at night, one that I think surpasses most divers out there. And all of this comes in at a price of $430. So there's a reason these things sell out almost as soon as they come back in stock. It's honestly one of the best World War II style field watches out there. And even though I'm a pretty big Hamilton fan, I'd easily recommend this over a standard khaki any day. Now, coming in at number 6, we have a modern classic reimagined with the Citizen Nighthawk 2.0. For me, the original Citizen Nighthawk was always the Citizen EcoDrive to get, and that was even before I really fell down this horological rabbit hole. Every time I saw one of these, I just loved how it looked. But what I came to learn later that's equally compelling is that this is a completely original and modern take on a pilot's watch. One that combines a fairly affordable GMT movement and a fairly tough durable build making it really an ideal travel watch for the general public. The original Nighthawk has been around forever, and I personally think of it as a modern classic. So when I heard that Citizen revamped this, I jumped at the chance as soon as I could find one. For the most part, the 2.0 still has the same basic layout, as well as the same tough durable build with 200 meters of water resistance. Yet Citizen was able to modernize and streamline the design a bit, creating what I think is a cooler looking watch. However, it's one that may not be quite as iconic as the original. Even if it's not something you're particularly attracted to, I think the new Nighthawk as well as the original Nighthawk are definitely worth knowing about. And when it comes to the 2.0s, the only real downside I've seen is that the prices haven't dropped at all. And in my opinion, they are just too high for what this watch is. And especially when you compare that to what the original Nighthawk is still selling for. Up next, we have a watch that's a bit unusual, and it's not surprising, because when a brand that's mostly known for making great divers tells you they're going to make a sports watch, you have no idea what to expect. So coming in at number 5, we have a watch that I don't think anyone really saw coming, with the Phoebus Nebula. And despite its quirky combination of unusual elements, this sporty Kraken wound up being one of their best watches yet. It starts off with a slim 40mm case that has 150 meters of water resistance, which is then paired with a vertically brushed sandwich dial and a Miyota 9015 movement. And all of this is then topped off with 15 layers of Super Luminova and a flat sapphire crystal, which is then thrown on a very comfy Jubilee bracelet. 
This is one where the images really speak for themselves. This thing is gorgeous to look at, if not a bit unusual. It's a bit casual, yet still dressy enough to make it a rather versatile piece. And personally, I think this thing is quite a strap monster, as everything I tried on this watch just looked good. For some, this watch is going to be way too hectic, and honestly, way too weird. Yet others are going to be attracted to its unique, visually interesting combination, one that calls out to them like a siren, kind of like that offbeat Phoebus logo. This is one I really like, but regardless about how you feel about it, I think this is one of the more interesting watches of 2021. I actually wound up reviewing two different watches last year from Second Hour Watches, and both of them were great. In fact, I think the Giant Stride might be the perfect compressor style watch, but for me, the second one was the real showstopper. So coming in at number four, we have the Second Hour Mandala. Once again, we have a sports watch, but there's no sports watch quite like the Mandala. It starts off with a smaller 40 millimeter case. That's fairly thin thanks to Symbiota 9039 movement. It's also fairly durable with an extra scratch resistant coating and 100 meters of water resistance complete with a screw down crown. Yet this right here, this dial is the real reason to get this thing. With its whirly swirly galoche center, custom hands, and multi-tiered outer layers, creating a stunning yet still highly functional piece. One with a beautiful complexity that really draws you in and won't let you go. Compared to the Nebula, this sports watch is more on the dressy side, yet its build quality ensures that you can wear this thing whenever and wherever you want. For me, I loved this thing the moment I first saw it, and I jumped on the Kickstarter as soon as I could. Although, eventually I did decide to go for the blue dial version instead of the black dial one I reviewed. I think the Mandala is one of the best microband watches I've ever run across. And I'm not just talking last year, I mean best run across, period. So if you haven't really checked this thing out, I recommend you go watch a video, because it is the real thing. Now, up next, we have a watch that has been out for quite a bit, but I didn't get a chance to look at it until this year. And part of that is because they are a little bit harder to get, as it is a JDM exclusive. So, coming in at number three, we have the Casio Oceanus T200. And if you didn't get a chance to check this one out beforehand, don't let that Casio name fool you. With this one, it's all about the Oceanus name, which is Casio's top of the line brand. The T200 is simply amazing, and I think in a lot of ways, it is really the perfect modern quartz watch, as it has the fit and finish of a higher end piece, yet combines that with a simple yet intricately gorgeous design. And thanks to it being a Casio, it is a complex movement with solar power, multiband, and Bluetooth. And that last bit does make it sound a little overly complex, but the Bluetooth functionality is really there as a backup to multiband or as a quick way to change the time when traveling. The T200 may not be a high accuracy quartz watch, like say the long jeans, but thanks to its connectivity, it should always be accurate, which makes this a great grab and go watch, one with a versatile design that's ready for just about anything. For a quartz watch, the T200 is a bit high, but prices do fluctuate and kind of all over the place for this one. Yet I think it is one that's worth it, or at the very least, it's worth knowing about. In a lot of ways, 2021 was kind of a dumpster fire of a year, but in other ways, it was actually pretty good, and it was especially good for my collection, as I got to see a number of pieces that I've really wanted to been seeing for a long time, such as the Oceanus, or the Conquest, or even my Hamilton Panda. However, number two on this list is a watch I never saw coming but it's one that's quickly become one of my favorite watches. So up next, and my second favorite watch of the year, is the Orient Star Standard, aka the Cheshire. This is a watch that I didn't even know existed and wasn't on my radar at all until Tuss Watches suggested I take a look at it. Now Tuss Watches is a store based out of the UK, and they're one I talk to every once in a while. And to be clear, they did give me a discount to review this specific watch. But a while ago, I asked them what were some Orients that people should know about, and this is one of the top ones they suggested. I really wasn't sure what to expect, but this thing blew me away the first moment I saw it. 
One of the things that surprised me in my original review was the number of comments I got from people suggesting that this was more of a sports watch. And it surprised me because I always thought of this as more of a dress watch. And in particular, a dress watch along the line of a Saab 033. In fact, I think this is more of a Saab 033 killer than anything else. But regardless of what you think this thing is, it is fantastic. As with most Orient stars, the fit and finish here punches way above its price point. But for me, it's really all about the dial, and just how the various shapes and elements within it really catch and play with the light as you're wearing it. The Cheshire is a beautifully complex watch to behold, but just as importantly, it's comfortable to wear throughout the day. So this is one that is destined to stay within my collection for a long time. And if you're curious as to why it got the nickname the Cheshire, well, just take a closer look at that dial, or just go check out the review. Now, before we get to the top watch of 2021, which I just happen to be wearing here, I do have one quick honorable mention, and that's the Vario 1918 Trench, as well as its sister watch, the Medic. I actually reviewed this killer vintage style field watch in 2020, right when their Kickstarter launched. So it doesn't quite qualify for this year's top 10 list, but I'm pretty sure I had it in last year's. However, the watches were actually released this year, and I wound up buying a gray version, as well as I did review the slightly larger Medic as well. So if you haven't seen the 1918 line already, they're definitely worth checking out. So without further ado, let's talk about the top watch for 2021. And it's a potentially controversial choice, as I'm the first one to admit that it's a potentially flawed watch. As the top watch for this year is an overpriced special edition, and one with a misplaced bezel and Hardlux crystal. So if you haven't guessed already, I'm talking about a Seiko. Yet despite all of that, this is easily my favorite watch of last year. So coming in at number one, we have the Seiko Antarctica Monster. Now in case you missed this one, it's basically a fourth gen Seiko monster but it's one with a special dial that's supposed to simulate the frozen tundra that is Antarctica, and that is complete with a few penguin tracks on the side of the dial. Even though those touches are fairly subtle, this is an odd design, and one that is kind of goofy, which partially is the reason I love it. There's just nothing else like it out there. I flat out love how different this watch is. Now, I've been a fan of the Monster series for a while, and part of the reason I love that is just because how different those watches look compared to a lot of divers out there. So when you take that body and throw in this dial, that just kind of cranks us up to 11. I've also really come to appreciate its unique color palette, which is kind of an odd thing to say. But this is a watch that never really matches anything I wear, yet somehow always seems to go with everything I wear at the same time. This one has easily become my favorite Seiko, and I love this watch enough to almost ignore its misaligned bezel. Almost. However, it's not all rainbows and happy feet, shall we say. As this is a 4th gen monster, it suffers all the issues that any other 4th gen monster suffers. Which includes a Hardlux crystal with a candy bar sitting on top, as well as a so-so bracelet, and one with a crappy clasp. You also have these completely horribly fit end links, not to mention the usual chaptering and bezel alignment shenanigans that just go along with Seiko. So as much as I love this watch and want to run out and tell everyone to buy one, I can't because of those issues. Which is unfortunate because those issues have become typical with Seiko divers these days. But as I said at the beginning, this video doesn't necessarily represent the best watches that are out there but more a top 10 list of the most memorable watches and reviews of last year. And in that regard, the Antarctica Monster is easily number one. Well, there you have it, the top 10 watches on relative time for 2021, as well as a little bit of a shameless plug, because I'm playing around with getting some merch. But before you go, make sure you comment down below on what are your top 10 watches for last year, as well as if you enjoyed the video, make sure you'll like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, see you next time.